All right, what's up ladies? This is Alex from MindfulAttraction.org. By the way, happy Thanksgiving. I didn't eat turkey, I ate burger. I ate burgers and fries. It was amazing. But anyways, today I'm gonna try to make my video as short as possible because I always make long videos and I hate that. Unless you guys like it, let me know in the comments below. But today we're going to make a video on the three signs that you will end up alone. <laughs> this is so depressing, right? <laughs> but I, was, I say this because I see this often. I see a lot of women who end up alone in my family, um, 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 parents of my friends where they end up alone and it's a very depressing thing. And as I seen people age throughout my whole lifetime, I started noticing that they all had very similar characteristic and it wasn't because of their looks. Remember that it wasn't because of their looks. It was because of certain personality traits that they had that if they, that if they focused on improving when they were young and even at that age, it will prevent the. It will prevent them from actually ending up alone when they die, ending up alone as they grow up, because because that's a lot of people's fears when they get into relationships. They don't want to be alone. So let's get started. The first sign that you will end up alone. <laughs> I think it sounds so evil, <laughs> so 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 dark. Is you see yourself as the victim. This is what this is the definition of narcissism. All right, when everything that happens is because of you. When everything that bad that happens is is against you. When everything that happens and you see yourself as a center, as the cause of everything that occurs in your life, either good or bad, that will cause a lot of conflicts in relationships. Because when you see yourself as a center of the, of the universe, all right, as the victim, as everyone's against you, you see yourself as weak. You don't have control in your life. Like everything becomes a personal attack. You're always on the defensive, especially when you're in a relationship. So what happens when you become a victim is that you're always defending yourself. You, 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 you're, you're, you're worrying so much about yourself that you cannot open your eyes and give. You can, you're, you're always worrying about what's going to happen to you. So everything that you do is to gain something from it. I'm nice to you so that you are so you could be nice to me later on. Everything has an ulterior motive. Everything that you do comes from the fear of being alone. And whenever you act out of fear, anything that you fear will always come to you. Remember that. So, so in order for you to actually negate that trait, you have to begin to empower yourself. Begin meditating, reading books on self-empowerment, and stop seeing yourself as the victim. Let me tell you something. We, a lot of people have the right to feel like the victim because of the things that happen in their lives, but it's counterproductive. You're only hurting yourself. It doesn't matter how justified you are, how wrong they did to you, how, how much wrong they did to you. At the end of the day, Whenever you put yourself as a victim, you will always lose out. Okay. Number two, lack of gratitude. And we can say this is that whenever you lack gratitude, you will always focus on the negative. So if you have a partner and, and something's wrong, you will always just focus on what's wrong and your partner will resent you for that. Your kids will resent you for that. Your friends will resent you for that. But when you have gratitude, you're focusing on the good. Gratitude is the opposite of what it is to be bitter. Nobody likes a better person. Everyone likes someone who's grateful. So when you become, when, when you lack the gratitude, you're just gonna be someone who's bad to be around. Always complaining, always seeing the glass half empty. And that's annoying as fuck. And that annoys men, all right? Nobody likes that. On the other hand, everybody loves someone who's, who, who appreciates the little things in life. Everyone loves someone who, who appreciates them for the little things that they have. And when you develop that quality, it doesn't matter about your looks, you will inevitably when you, you will inevitably end up with someone. And even if you don't end up with someone, you have the proper mentality to enable you to stay sane because you will be grateful. A way to develop gr gratefulness is to meditate. Just meditate. I'm telling you, when you meditate, you will learn to appreciate the things in life, the little things in life, not the big things in life. All right? So number, and number three, and this is the biggest one, and the, the inability to be alone. If you cannot be alone, if you cannot be for one minute alone, it means that you're running away from something. It means that you're distracting your mind from a current reality that you're living in your mind. It means that you're running away from your trance of unworthiness. It means that you're trying to distract yourself from the pain. So your inability to be alone, it means that there's a part of yourself that you don't want to confront. Because think about it, when you're alone, what happens? Your thoughts come up, your feelings come up. And so the way in reality you're feeling pain, but you don't feel the pain in its entirety. You just see a part of it through the manifestation of wanting to be distracted. 
on how badly you want to be distracted is indicative of the pain that you feel you just don't feel it directly it's just indirectly that's how the, that, that's how the brain is that's how you're able to remain to um that's how that's, that's how certain parts of you became, remain unconscious you see so by in order to feel at ease at being alone a good way to do that is to become present and once again to meditate that's what meditation is being alone being with yourself so when, when you learn to be alone you will begin to see that it's not that bad and yeah it's gonna be painful but being alone and listening to what's going on inside of you and not judging yourself but listening think about this the difference between listening and judging when you're just listening it's kind of like just listening to the radio you hear voices you hear people talking and you're listening you see but when you hear if somebody talking about you suddenly you're not just listening you're judging you see that's how I want you to listen to your thoughts and emotions whenever you're alone by just listening but but remember even though you hear the I like I this I that like any thoughts emotions or memories that you're trying to run away from just feel as though you're listening to the radio of your mind just listen because if you're listening who's the one that's talking it's not you it's your brain and if you're listening to your brain it means you're not your brain because you're able to step out of it okay and so when you learn to be alone suddenly you're easy to be around with because when you love yourself when you're when you love when you when you learn to be alone that means you you learn to love yourself and if you learn to love yourself that means you're seeing something in yourself that you love and people only see what you see in yourself so if you see the parts that, that are lovable in that and that you appreciate about yourself people are going to want to be around you men are going to want to be around you but if you see the parts of you that you're ashamed of and that you're shy of, people are not gonna be around you because that's the only sign they're gonna see. And if they don't see that part, the part of you that you that you're trying to hide, right? They're gonna see your 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 efforts to hide those parts of yourself that you're ashamed of as a form of insecurity. Like that effort of wanting to hide the parts of yourself that you don't like manifests in so itself as a form of insecurity. So if a guy might say, oh, you look good today, you may respond to him like, what do you mean today? Well, yesterday I wasn't looking good. I swear to God, that happened to me a couple of times. I'm like, holy shit, what did I, did I just tell you? You know? And so that's what happens. And so you got to realize that it, that's all because you don't love yourself. So you have to learn to be alone with yourself. And that's why I always say meditate. A good book to re that I recommend you on that is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle or The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. Those books will literally change your life. And if you cannot be alone with yourself, a guy wouldn't want to be alone with you. Anyways, this is Alex. These are the three signs that, that you'll possibly end up alone. And they are one, you see, when you see yourself as a victim, two, lack of gratitude, and three, your inability to be alone with yourself. Um, comment and subscribe. Let me know what signs you guys thought I left out and you guys think that I should have included. Let me know below. Take care.